Elon and X was, well, Elon specifically was the only one who stood up amongst our American big tech companies to say, no, this is a very bad bill. The others, to my knowledge, were very, very silent or they were actually coming out in support of it. Competition makes sense. The other, the other piece of that is um, other than X and TikTok, the Biden administration has been very successful at working with Google uh, and Meta, Facebook, Instagram in being able to control uh, quote unquote disinformation and information. Mm. So when you look at from a government standpoint, well, why, why, if you're concerned about data security and privacy, why, why aren't you doing it across the board and treating every social media company that Americans use with that same, that same standard? Well, maybe they're, they're just going after the ones that they can't actually control and intimidate into doing their work for them, which is why it makes sense why Elon Musk and others would say, well, of course, if, if today it's TikTok, then why wouldn't it be X tomorrow? It's interesting to me that people don't seem to understand the value and importance of a guy like Elon, who's yeah. this wild billionaire character who likes to dunk on people. Like that guy being like, did you see that thing that he posted the other day? Because <clears throat> there's a... Uh, one of the guys who was like from Facebook, I believe, uh, said that uh, what Elon is doing is corruption on like an Enron level, I think he compared it to. So Elon posted a photo of a dog laying its balls on another dog's head. <laughs> and I did not see this. It was like dunking on this dude. I'm like, how wild is this guy? <laughs> And then someone said, did you really spe- spend $44 million billion dollars on, on Twitter so you can dunk on people? And he writes 100%. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> I don't know how he has time for this. I, I mean, don't get it. I don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. But and he do does. everything else that he's doing. It's, he's a fascinating guy. Yeah. I mean, his, his brain is a fucking tornado of information just flying around all the time. And I think it helps him to be able to just fuck around yeah. and be silly. Yeah. But he was the only one that recognized that there's a real problem if you have the entire narrative being controlled by one ideology through all the social media apps. Yes. And that's what's going on. Exactly. They're all tech companies. Tech companies have hi- hired people that are coming from universities and they're all infected right. by this ideology. And it's nuts that that's the case. Yeah. And then they've done a really good job. Like if you go to like Gab or any of them, especially initially, like it was so nuts. You're like, oh my God, I got to get out of here. Yeah. It was like like going to a Nazi party. Like, oh, like even if you're not a Nazi, like there's Sieg Heil in the corner. Like, <laughs> shit, I got to get out of here. <laughs> like, I don't know how I it is now. I never went in those rooms. <laughs> I don't know how it is now, but I guarantee some of that was fake too. Mm. I guarantee when they came up with these alternative platforms that they people wanted to squash the idea of having people that were free outside of Twitter and Facebook that were reasonable people that just wanted objective conversation, which yeah. I guarantee most of them were. Yeah. Most of them were tired of being censored on Twitter and shadow ban and all that shit. So they try these other, whether it's Gab or Truth Social or any of them. Right. I guarantee you, if look, if I was an intelligence agent and I was inclined to do, I would get in there and start Sieg Heilen. Mm-hmm. I'd go crazy. I'd, I'd post the, the most racist memes and have everybody salute. I'd go nutty. I'd have fake accounts liking those things and getting excited about it and reposting it because that's how you make a place toxic. Mm-hmm. And that's how you kill the competition. Right. I would do that. I would right. do that if I was running Twitter. Right. If like if you're just sh- if you were just a ca- I obviously wouldn't do it. Me as a yeah, person. no, of course. But if I was a yeah. evil fuck, yeah, I would be like, this yeah. is the way to do it. No, like, it makes sense. It let's makes take sense. that. How place. do you make it a place where people yeah. don't want to be? How hard is that to do? You hire a bunch of people to do it. You get algorithms. You, you develop them. You start posting memes and shit. And yeah. You, easy. Yeah. Now, now you make it toxic. Yeah. And now I look and I go, ugh, you gotta get out of here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And Makes so then sense. you don't have an alternative and you go back to Twitter and you just deal with the fact that you're being censored and you deal with the fact that if you're a left-wing person, you could say the most outrageous shit, even call for violence against people. Twitter caught selling data to government spies while complaining about surveillance. <laughs> in for a penny, <laughs> in, for, in a for a data mine. Is this recently? <clears throat> what is this saying now? That they have a deal with a company called Data miner, and what does data miner do? Uses AI technology to constantly monitor public activity on social media and other parts of the web, 
In doing so, its clients, often law enforcement, can receive customized real-time alerts of what's brew- on what's brewing online, which helps them to respond to natural disasters or, more ominously, spy on protests, notes The Intercept. Okay. <clears throat> but also does allow them real-time alerts of what's brewing online. So you're not saying they're censoring people. You're saying that they're allowing them to look at data. So that data could be like how many people are posting about some sort of a protest where they want to burn down a church or wh- whatever the fuck it is. Hmm. Y- you, you're talking about a different thing than banning people from posting things, especially these people that are experts from yeah. Harvard and MIT, and this is a different thing. I've seen, I've seen. I mean, there's a data miner app. I've seen how the information flows through. I don't know what the. It says the story revealed the surveillance firm pays for special access to a fire hose of data from Twitter. I'd be curious about what. Yeah, what does that what mean? What that fire hose. <clears throat> fire hose of data is this data miner has a unique contractual relationship with twitter whereby they have real-time access to the full stream of all publicly available tweets so but it's just publicly available tweets that are already available so it's like a very high level search function a company representative said an email to the government agency per the report so is that like a a search function like because it's all public tweets so they have access to the stream of all publicly available tweets. But doesn't everybody have access to the publicly available tweets? Yeah. Not with AI right. software right. monitoring it. Right, but if you did have an AI, so like say if you had an AI, whether like, it's Google's AI or any AI, and you said, hey, go look at Twitter. Tell me who's talking about Nazis. Right, yeah, curating, uh, curating yeah. the tweets that are coming into your feed. That's part of what he's been complaining about online is how many people, have, and they've blocked access to many programs that that 